Hi, storytellers. It's Mr. George from the Delaware County District Library. I'm so glad to be with you today. I have a special thought. I've been thinking about a song of mine, and it makes me think of you and me and everyone around us. It's a classic song. You might know this one. It's called The More We Get Together. Here we go. The more we get together, 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 the more we get together, the happier we'll be. Cause your friends are my friends, and my friends are your friends. The more we get together, the happier we'll be. When I get to thinking about those lyrics, the more we get together, sometimes it's hard for us to get together and make new friends. Sometimes we hear things about people and we think we know about them. But do we really know? We think we know about them. Knowledge is different than just thinking. I've been hearing a lot about certain people and I, I'd like to investigate and learn about them before I think negative thoughts, I hear negative things. I like to research and learn more. Oh, I've got one book, there's an interesting one called Let's Look at China. It's a Pebble Plus series. I've shared these before and I really like these especially with Asian Pacific American Heritage Month, you could learn about different countries. <laughs> and here, oh, this one's got, oh, it's where is China? Uh, from mountains to deserts, in the wild. Oh, learn about the people. There's a chapter on that. At the table, I wonder if that's about food. Festivals, we like our festivals, and other folks do throughout the world. On the job, transportation, and other famous places. And, well, okay, so where is China? Let's use this book, let's learn a little bit. See, so where is China? So China is in Eastern Asia. So we're here in North America. Over here is China. It is about as big as the United States. Well, check this book out and learn more and check out other great Pebble Plus books. And I encourage you all to look at other cultures and country profile books to learn about people that live with us all around that are part of our culture here in the United States. It's a great thing to learn. I also love learning about their stories and history. This book has festivals, and sometimes festivals are connected to stories like folk and fairy tales. Oh, that reminds me, I have a special guest. She is an expert in Chinese storytelling. And I, I think I'd like to share her with you so you can know more about our friends that live with us here in the United States. Well, Yenning Lin, take it away. I'd love to learn more about Chinese folk tales. Hello, my name is Yenning Lin. Um, I am a rapper on site coordinator at Cleveland Playhouse here in Cleveland. Um, Mr. George asked me to come talk to you or record this video to talk about Chinese folk tales. And it is the beginning of Asian Pacific um, American Heritage Month. That's the month of May. Um, in this month, we celebrate the cultures and the heritages of these countries. Um, there's a lot of them, so don't worry. We have um, those countries on the continent of Asia and then in the Pacific, Pacific Islands. So China, Japan, Thailand, India, Cambodia, Indonesia, Philippines, just to name a few. Um, Vietnam is on that list. Um, and then the Pacific Islands, Hawaii, New Zealand, Samoa, Tonga, and the Marshall Islands, again, just to name a few. But we, during this month of May, we celebrate all of these cultures and these traditions. So today, I'm actually just going to focus on Chinese folk tales. Um, I am Chinese American, which is why I feel more comfortable um, talking about these folk tales. But I want to start off with a question, and I think some of you, you, some of you might be able to answer this on your own, but what is a folk tale? What is that? It's a story, right? It's a story that is passed down by word of mouth until it is written down. They have universal themes, so they teach lessons to our children. Um, characters in these stories are often two-dimensional, meaning that they're either good or they're bad. Um, not many of these characters have multifaceted personalities, right? Multifacets meaning different aspects to our personality, right? 
They help to explain the world around the storyteller. And I think we'll see that in these folk tales. So let's get started. I'm just going to talk about a few because I only have a few minutes. I'm only going to talk about a few folk tales and then you can, um, I provide a list at the end so then you can go and find your own and then read them. Um, and hopefully this presentation will help inspire you to read some of those. So one of the fairy tale, or one of the folk tales um, is how the lunar calendar was created. So every year in the months of January, February, um, Asian, certain specific Asian countries, China, um, Vietnam, um, not Japan, but China, Vietnam, a variety of countries will celebrate the Lunar New Year. Now the Lunar New Year means it's based off the moon. Our Western calendar is based off the sun. So, so the lunar calendar sort of works off of a different day system, right? So every year is a different animal, right? So we have the rat. This past year was the year 2020. So that was the year of the rat. Right now we're in the year of the ox, which is a cow. And then you just keep going on and on. So as you listen to me do this presentation, find your year. Tell me which, um, or tell Mr. George next time you see him, what year are you? What animal are you? So for example, my, I was born in 1983. Okay, so that a long time ago. So I am a pig. My husband was born in 1982, so he is a dog. My son was born in the year 2020, so he is a rat. So we, you know, conveniently managed to occupy those last two animals in that first one. So find your year. Tell Mr. George the next time you see him, I am a, I am a cow. I am a, I am a rooster, you know? Um, so the story of the lunar calendar. The Jade Emperor, who is the king of heaven in Chinese culture and um, traditions, decided to hold a race among the animals. Th these animals who won, the, won those races would become his guards. The rat won, because they're crafty. Rat won by jumping, jumping on the back of the ox as the ox swam across the river. And the rat won first place, and the ox came in second. The tiger won third place by running faster than the rabbit, who came in fourth. The dragon flew into fifth place, while the snake came in fifth, or in sixth, rather. The horse and the goat were so polite that they said that each other could go first, so the Jade Emperor rewarded the horse with seventh place and the goat with eighth. The monkey fell behind, but eventually caught up, and he got ninth place. The rooster, the dog, and the pig came in tenth, eleventh, and twelfth, which is why the animals are in the order in which they are placed on the calendar. So that is how we have the lunar calendar, and that is how we have the animals in their specific orders. It's because of that race. Chang'e and Hoi, um, this is the origins of a festival in China called the Mid-Autumn Festival, and we eat mooncakes during that time. And these are filled with thing, delicious things like red beans, um, sometimes there's egg inside. It's just full of deliciousness. Chang e is um, was married to the archer Ho Yi, who shot nine, ten, nine out of ten suns in the sky, out of the sky to prevent those suns from scorching the earth. As a reward, he was given the elixir of life, which would then give him immortality. He chose not to take it because he didn't want to live without his wife, so he gave it to Chang e for safekeeping. Now there are two versions of how Chang e came to drink that elixir. One version is that she kept it or she drank it in order to prevent uh, someone from stealing it. Um, the other option, the other version is that she was just selfish and she wanted to drink it for herself. She was greedy. She just wanted to drink it for herself. And as a result of drinking it, she flew off to the moon where she lives and is um, the only company she has the Jade Rabbit. Does this story sound familiar? It should, because if you've seen the... Um, movie on Netflix called Over the Moon, you know, Fei Fei tries to re tries to, or builds a spaceship, right? She builds a spaceship to go find Chang'e so that she can take a picture with the goddess in order to prevent her father from marrying, from marrying another woman after her mother dies. So Chang'e is a very big deal in Chinese culture. And um, every year in 
I would say September, October, um, Chinese people will eat, will celebrate the Mid Autumn Festival, which, excuse me, which commemorates Chang'e's flight to the moon. The last story I'm going to talk about today is my favorite. This is my absolute favorite. It's the, called Journey to the West. It's a very long, epic novel, but it's about a monkey named Song Wukong. Now, in the year of the monkey in China, um, I happened to be in China right as the Lunar New Year was happening, and it was the year of the monkey. We were going into the year of the monkey, and Song Wukong was everywhere, like everywhere. He, he was on fences. He was on poles. He was decorating people's homes. He was just everywhere. So he is, a mis he is mischievous. He is clever. He is ambitious. He acquires magic, magic and fighting skills through Taoist teachings. And the story, dot, and the story, which is again very long, is four massive books, about that thick. Documents his battles with heaven and his journey to the west, which in this case is India, with a monk, a pig, and a friar, and a horse. Sorry, um, and a horse that is actually transformed from a from the son of a dragon. And they travel to India to bring back the Buddhist scriptures back to China. So that is how Buddhism came into China. This is my absolute favorite. If you look up Monkey King or Song Wukong, the spelling is right here on YouTube or on, um, on Google Images, you know, you'll find these images um, everywhere and you'll actually maybe see him perform. There are plays in Chinese culture called Jing, um, called Jingju, J-I-N-J-I-N-G-J-U. And that is one of the traditional theater forms in China. And one of their favorite plays is this one right here, Sun Wukong, okay? Um, and he fights, he does fantastic things. It is a lot of fun to watch. And you don't need to know the language. That was just even better, right? So before I leave you, um, I just want to list um, some, um, some other Chinese folk tales that you can go and find and read. And maybe you'll actually... Um, find some other ones that aren't on this list. So we mentioned two of them um, in previous, um, in when we discussed Chang'e. So one of them is ho about Ho Yi and the Ten Sons, how he came to shoot nine of the Ten Sons out of the sky. Another story is a Jade Rabbit um, who lives with, Cho with Chang'e on the sun, on the moon, not on the sun, but on the moon, um, how he got there, right? Another one is Mulan, the woman warrior, um, we all know the Disney cartoon and now the Disney live action movie. Um, and Mulan is a very big, important character in Chinese folktale. Then there's another one, Mu Guiying and the Yang family generals. Again, another woman warrior, strong women um, saving China, right? And then we have another one called the White Snake, um, which is a lot of fun. And she goes to find a secret, um, an herb for her husband who is ill. And she, um, fights off demons and um, in order to get that potion. I hope you learned something today. Um, I had a lot of fun putting this together, so thank you, Mr. George, for asking me to do this. Happy Asian and Pacific Heritage Month. Go out, enjoy the, hopefully it'll get sunny again. It's kind of gloomy here in Cleveland. Enjoy the weather. Um, Explore some Asian cultures while you're um, looking around the library, okay? And then Mr. George will tell me. All right, I'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Thank you so much, Yining Lin. I'm so glad that you were able to share your talents with us. And storytellers, those stories that she shared, take a look at DelawareLibrary.org, check out the catalog and search those stories. And of course, ask a local librarian you know, for help finding those stories and also to look into you know, folk and fairy tales and traditional stories from other countries. There's lots of collections of stories from around the world to help you and, and me and others around us to understand that we're not so different, but also to look at differences and find that we are still so connected. Well, remember that song, the more we get together, 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 the more we get together, the happier we'll be.
through books, that's a great way, and stories for us to be together, even though we're not. That to get us beyond hearing and just thinking about other people, but knowing more about them and learning about them and knowing that they're not so different, but really very similar. Storytellers, keep sharing the love of reading. Keep sharing the love of stories. And of course, keep transitioning from thinking to knowing. Bye, storytellers.